Today we're going to be spending the whole day with Alex Hamozi. Top 10, we will see you guys in Las Vegas. Uh huh. We're going to Vegas. Uh -huh. Let's go. Top 10. In this video, I want to walk you through the top five lessons that I learned from spending the whole day with Alex and Mersey, worth over $100 million and the co-founder of school. By the end of this video, you will understand how Hamozi is able to produce 350 pieces of content per week for his personal brand, how I've selected his lesson and implemented this in my business. And this video will give you all the tools, resources, and system teaching you how you can start doing it for yourself today. My name is Hakeem Hong and I made over 25K a month purely as a barber and doing this by growing my personal brand and charging 250 per haircut. I'm gonna get an Uber now to the headquarters of acquisition.com. Uh, we're about to check in. We arrived in front of acquisition.com and was welcomed warmly. The top 10 communities was there from all different types of niches. There were literally like a billion dollars in this room right now. And gems were just being dropped and dropped and dropped. First section is about content. Alex Hamozi posts 350 pieces of content per week. Like, what? Like, 300, how? In a week, he has two days where he mainly does recording sessions. He could be doing a long form video, then make seven pieces of short form content from that one long form. So for example, he could have an hour coaching meeting and make 10 short form content in that one hour. This literally blew my mind. Coming from a barber background, posting three to four times a week was a golden bar. 350 is how do you apply this? You, right now watching. So for example, you could be recording a day in a life. With that day in a life video, you can create two other forms of content. For example, you doing a specific part of your day. Because a lot of content creators, all they do is that they spend all this time creating one piece of content, but not fully harnessing the power of repurposing. Short spheres become long spheres. And I just haven't seen that. Like I hear it all the time, but when I looked at it, that just wasn't the case. People who watch longs, want more longs. People who watch shorts, watch more shorts. So people have consumption preferences by platform. When I figured my content system out, that's when I really blew up because I had a structure. I know when content was coming out. I know all the content I captured. It was easily planned through this system. That took me years to learn. Oh, so in the morning, we'll attack like the US market. Uh, like each time zone, we're attacking different types of uh, time zones. So for example, UK, uh, would be it's at 8 a.m. in Melbourne time for us. Yep. And then 12.30, we'd do A-B tests for the US, see when they're most active. But now, I'm literally giving it all away. If you go on my Instagram and you go on my description, you will see that it's there, just for you guys. So now I'm like shifting everything and really giving everything for you guys. Very nice content engine in there, and we give it to, to the public. Wouldn't people in the community be like, yo, I paid for that. Right, I see like the free PDFs that people give away, and like, I think more people go in, see it's a piece of shit, and then never want to do anything for that person again. It's like, it actually has to be exceptional. Next thing that I learned is effort in content. So you have low production content and you have high production content. Because when you have all these crazy production and graphics when you're doing educational videos, it can be very distracting to the viewers from the actual value that you're providing. With low production, your simple objective is to provide as much value in the shortest amount of time. Create higher CTR, higher conversion rates, and at higher prices. One level underneath of that is people who recognize my fans and have gotten some sort of positive experience with the content that I have. Even if it's just one video, they're like, you know, I did like that video that got made. So literally the equation would something be like, how much value can I get per second? One of the things that Alex preaches heaps is that give so much free value, you feel like you need to charge for it. So if you feel like the audience should pay for this information that you have, because you know, either took you so long to learn or you paid for that information or it has a lot of value to you that it should have monetary gain, that's the perfect feeling to have. So people are like, wow, I don't wanna do all those 10,000 problems. Show me the three-step way that you do it from this big thing you did. And so, I mean, I think this is how civilization moves forward is that like, it, it takes us all this time to learn this thing. We then distill it down. Someone starts one step further and then like, that's how you put a brick in the wall. There's more upside to giving away more than it is giving away less. Most valuable thing. And after four and a half hours of intense absorbing knowledge, we had a lunch break. So intense focus for four hours straight, taking notes like this is locked yeah. in on, on yeah. a freaking billionaire advice. And knowing that if you, if you stop paying attention for a couple of seconds, that, you're missing out on gems. $1, yeah, you're literally you're missing out on gems. <laughs> yeah. So as an entrepreneur, you actually like really get slumped. You gotta understand when to take breaks. You don't have to have a day when you take rest days. You can just take it when you need it. For me, I can go intense focus for like two, three weeks. And then after the third week, 
I can take like a rest day or something like that. Alex Amosi takes breaks. That's one thing that I learned, guys. Yeah, He's yeah, actually yeah. having a rest day tomorrow. Well, this guy behind the camera, he gets another break. So he has to be there behind the camera 24-7. All right, and during this lunch break, I had a conversation with Alex Amosi on how we can uplift the barbering industry. We truly believe that barbering is one of the best business models to get into as a young kid. Yeah. It's a barrier of entry. It's a lot lower than online business. Yeah. We want to expand it into like self-improvement, but make it so that all young kids want to become a barber to get into entrepreneurship. So at some point you'll have to decide between whether you want to help current barbers do better or help people become barbers. Mm. And so those are yeah, two, different, two, two yeah. very many different businesses. Yeah. After like a million dollars a year of income, there's not a lot that you can't do. Yeah. Like the next tier is like, you know, it's like diminishing returns. And you think you'll be ambitious now, but you've got to wait until you're making $3 million. And more. then you're like, how old are you right now? Uh, I'm 21. And I got to properly really talk with the winners that were the top communities of the whole platform. These guys were making 20K, 50, 30K a month. And it was like you can feel the growth in the atmosphere due to just how hungry everyone is. We were literally in competition with everyone in here. And that's when I realized that during the midst of the month competing to be the top community, the competition actually drove us to make more scale harder and put extra grit to the work because we knew that someone could easily take the spot. And then being with everyone at the finish line that made the top 10, it was super fruitful, man. Like being surrounded in that environment just pushes you to you know, go even further. What is the one of the bottlenecks or the obstacles that you experience with growing your business from either five to six figures, six to seven figures, wherever you are right now? Just being open to learning. Some people aren't open to learning and they have a closed mind towards not wanting more. Some people think that they know everything. So when I first became a barber, I was like, yeah, I'm good, I'm a, I'm a good barber. But then when you start to learn more, you realize you know nothing. So it's called the Danny Kruger effect. The more you do something, the less you feel like you know about it. After the lunch break, we come back for another intense four hours work session. And during this work session, Alex Mosey was explaining how content creators don't fully harness the power of Instagram content format. So it's like, if you, there's a picture of me and you're doing something, whatever, or a carousel, I, I basically almost like guarantee way higher reach just within people who know who I am. So let me clear that up for you guys today. So Instagram Reels are really good at gaining new audience. So you have to market with Reels. Pictures and carousels nurtures your audience. And I realized that a lot of content creators and barbers, you scroll down and you just see Reels, which only bring in new audience, but doesn't take care of the audience that you already have. The final lesson that I'm gonna share with you guys today is work-life balance. A manager has 20 plus work blocks per day that they can separate into five, 10, 15 minute chunks. A maker has two, maybe like morning, the afternoon. Even if you know you have something in the afternoon, you start thinking about it and you're like, all right, I'll for that meeting. You're like, I set a timer to make sure that I don't keep working and stuff like, and I miss the meeting. And so it still takes a certain percent of attention. There are two types of people. You have makers and you have managers. So what makers are is that they have more creative tasks such as like creating content, ideating. It requires a longer work block and deep intense session. Whereas managers have more admin work, organizing, financial budgeting, even facilitating your personal tasks such as like more, more like miscellaneous tasks with more shorter work blocks. As a business owner or entrepreneur starting your career, you have to be both. I found that I would edit and plan content, you know, the, a creative task, then go do laundry, then go back to planning content, editing. It will be so hard for me to actually get back in flow. Do you guys feel like you have that? It's because you're switching between two different tasks that require a different part of your brain. It ruins the musician-like spirit to be doing accounting. Creative tasks require a longer entry point to get you into a creative flow. So you can't have any distractions. So you have to be separating your creative tasks and your manager tasks into time blocks. And through nine hours, we finished the day. Just so much absorbed. We saw Alex Hamozi making an ad and finishing up with creating content. We just wrapped up the school winner's day and I talk about school and I think it's awesome. It's a great way to make your first dollar online, but I want to show you what real people that aren't me actually did in the last games this last this last month. So he came, made He literally did it in one take. You know, he did three forms of content and did it in one take, which was crazy. And he was able to multiply the amount of content just in under 20 minutes of recording. So that's literally seeing it in the flesh of him talking about repurposing right there. We finish and leave acquisition.com into the streets of Vegas.
To get in this position right now, I spent 12 hour days, six days a week, building a copy and paste barber system, putting everything that I know and that has allowed me to have success into this framework formula, literally grinding and putting our heads down, having an impact focus first on how we can get people that have joined my course to get the highest results in the shortest amount of time through teaching the formula I use. So we just launched Barber Accelerator and we had our webinar, first one just then. And I feel like I'm in the right place with Barber Accelerator. We better go live because we really want to win the school games. It ends in less than nine hours. Nine hours. Eight and a half hours. So we're going to make sure we win this game. It's neck and neck right now. Ready to go, baby. Let's get it. Spot number seven out of the school games. Let's go. Let's go. The launch went so well and people just got crazy results from it straight away that the school co-owner himself, Alex Hermosi, which has like a combined net worth of over a hundred million dollars, hopped on call with us and invited us down to his quarters of acquisition.com. Top 10, we will see you guys in Las Vegas. Uh -huh. We're going to Vegas. Uh. Let's go. The buildings here look real like funky. Why is this pole so big? Why does the pole need to be that big? Uh, <laughs> in Australia, it's like it's like here. And that's all it needs to take a car. Like you really need to do. Plus, plus I want we can take it out. This. Okay, maybe I shouldn't hold this pole like this. People always say like this city is like a sin city, and what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And you hear a lot about it of like what goes on here. So. I made sure to stay purified by making our prayers on time. As you know, I'm a revert Muslim. We pray five times a day. So even though we're traveling, we still realize the greater purpose in this world. This is very itchy. <laughs> Praying on the grass. Man, it was like this. We really asked questions that genuinely tickled, like had an itch. Yeah. You know when you itch something and you're like, oh, I got it. Frick, dude, it's still itchy. Alex is a very good explainer. He explains it in a way where he treats you like a baby that doesn't know anything about what business is. If you can explain it in a simple term, that actually means you know it more. The simpler you explain it, the more you know it. Okay, let's wrap up this whole thing, right? So you coming into like us barbers or like, you know, 21 year olds going into like a room full of multi-millionaires, you would think that we have some type of imposter syndrome, right? But the fact that we are just curious and have an itch to just learn and grow, that qualifies us to be in that room. And us asking questions and us being curious towards, you know, Alex and Mosey, like actually elevates the whole room for it to be fruitful, to, to be a learning environment. Mm. So I don't feel a sense of imposter syndrome being in there at all. Yeah. Yeah, I feel, if yeah. anything, qualified to be in there. But you know, I realized like everyone has different systems. Look at Alexander, he doesn't even have a content system. He just gets out and record. They look at it that way, like, damn, we should do that. But they're probably looking at our stuff and like, what the freak, we should do that. The grass is always greener on the other side. Ooh, that looks succulent. Bro, yeah. that looks crazy. Yeah. I think that's lamb. Best thing about running a restaurant. Lamb. When you have passion for cooking, and cooking is my passion. That's why I can taste it. I can taste it, yeah, yeah. 100%. That's actually our motto as well. We do what we love every day as well. And that's why we flew into Vegas. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what? Let me come right now and give you guys some drinks. No, 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 and no, I make okay. sure to give you guys three different types of drinks. Each one of them have a different flavor. Oh, that you're works. too nice. That works. Definitely. I knew I knew I came to the right place. She was so much, she gave us like drinks. Look, look, give us another one. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Look, guys, people would try to like downgrade what you do. Maybe you're just a barber or you're just a content creator or you're just this, you're just that. People don't truly see the vision that we see. If you stay to the end, you probably have a similar sense of hunger, a similar sense of wanting more. We share something in common. We don't want to be working for anyone else. We don't want a, just a normal life. We want freedom. So keep pushing even if you don't see results, even if your friends are saying whatever. Luck of opportunities and the chances increase as you work harder. If you need help getting there faster, maybe some guidance, along with some networking of hundreds of other hungry barbers, my mentorship access is in the description. As you can see, my mentality of creating content 
is purely providing you as much value as I can, regardless of if it's any industry, regardless of if it's in the barber industry, even just being a person, you know what I mean? So uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.